This video is gonna be all about camera gear. Everything that surrounds creating videos for YouTube and that in my opinion, I would have loved to invest in when I started out. If you haven't been here before, my name is Peter and I live in Sweden, va? Happy to meet you, or as we say here in uh, Sverige. Hey! Hoppas att allt är gött med dig. When I bought my first camera, there was a bunch of things that I didn't know about cameras that I wish I would have known about cameras, such as, you know, aperture is the one thing that makes your video or photo get this like shallow depth of field. I just thought it was all in the camera, not about the lens itself. That's how things change. That's how, how we learn. And maybe you're even watching this video and this is the actual first time that you're here that the lens and the aperture is what makes your videos blurry. There you go, happy to help. I wish someone told me when I started out. But I've been creating YouTube videos now full time for over four and a half years. And it's like, it's one of the best things that I have ever gotten myself into. I wouldn't trade it away for the world. I love doing this. I love the interaction with all of you. But one thing that I have done is that I've tried so many different things. And now for the last two years, or I would say three years, I've sort of like found the gear that works the absolute best for me. And I want to share this with you if you are looking into doing a little bit of a bigger investment into your YouTube career or videography career, then these things might help. The first thing that we're going to talk about is, of course, the most obvious thing, and that is the Sony CV-E one. This camera right here is one of my absolute favorite cameras ever. I love this thing because it has everything that you can expect from a high-end full-frame camera, but in a smaller package. Ah, whoa! That is a small full-frame camera. It is capable of shooting 4K 120 FPS, 4K 30 FPS, all the different FPS from like 25 up to 4K 120. You have 10-bit color science, great photo mode. The only drawback really is when you're taking photos you only get 12 megapixels but if you have the right lens this camera is going to be great for all the things you as a content creator would like to use a camera for i'm not saying that you have to go for the full frame version because you do have the cv e10 i think it's called which is an aps-c version basically sort of the same camera but not the same sensor but if you are on a tighter budget then looking into the APS-C system might be the way to go for you. The thing that makes these cameras so freaking good is the interchangeable lens system. This right here is Sony 16-35 f2.8 hell of an expensive lens but it's also one of the best lenses that I've used for content creation ever since I started doing YouTube videos full time. And the great thing is that you can replace the lenses. So if you were to buy a camera with a fixed lens, then you can't switch out the lens. You can't buy another lens to attach to your camera. That is why I highly recommend having an interchangeable lens system when you're buying your new camera. Sony has released a version two of this lens that is more lightweight, it's a little bit smaller. It absolutely does reduce your footprint in your camera bag when it comes to the weight aspect. I don't feel that the upgrade is something that you have to go for if you already have this lens or if you're looking to buy this lens because this is very good. I think that the autofocus is super snappy and you do get some really versatile stuff with this lens because you, all, you have these super wide shots at 16 millimeters but then you can also go up to 35 and with these cameras you have like clear image zoom so you can crop 1.5 times more which basically turns this into a 16 to 50 millimeter lens and that mm -hmm -hmm, is good with that said though it is a very expensive setup, but I do think if you were to buy something like this, you don't need to upgrade in the foreseeable future. And I'm talking about like four, five, six years. That's just what I think. When I started shooting my YouTube videos, I had this big Rode mic that was taking up so much space above the camera. Basically everyone looked at the microphone because it was so big rather than me walking around with the camera. But Sony, does have these kind of microphones. They are called the ECM B1 and the ECM B1M. Freaking amazing microphones, mainly because they don't have a battery built into them. They are using the battery off the camera. So there's no cords that are going into the camera. And when you want to use this, you just slide it into the hot shoe, tighten it, and then you're done. And this audio that you're listening to right now is from one of those microphones. 
haven't used another microphone for the last two and a half years, and I'm not looking to change it in the coming two and a half years either, unless Sony were to release something that's even better than this. But this setup that I got right here is such a good setup. It is the one camera setup that I have been using for almost all my videos for the last one and a half years, or ever since the CVE-1 was released. I cannot recommend this enough for someone that is looking into buying a complete system that you want to create YouTube videos with, or that you want to take an extra step further and start doing client work, but you don't want to go up to the A7S 3 or the FX3. This is your workhorse. It does have a tendency to overheat if you're shooting over 35, 40 minutes constantly in 4K 25 FPS. I have never once experienced any sort of overheating in 4K 120 because I'm basically just shooting bursts. Is there anyone that actually leaves their camera shooting in like 4K 120 for 30 minutes? I wonder. So once you have this set up, you're pretty much set on having a running gun camera setup that you can create anything with. But you also want to make sure that you have a little bit of add on kind of gear so that you can make your videos a little bit spicy. And one of the things that is super easy to help enhance your videos is one of these. And this one in particular is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Ever since the DJI Mini 3 came, I have been blown away by how good these drones are. And whenever I go out to shoot anything, this is in my camera bag. If I'm going to Iceland, this is the priority that I bring and then all the other drones are like bonus because I know that the image quality that is coming out of this thing is wild for being this size of a drone. I made a video where I compare this drone towards the DJI Air 3. Highly recommend check it out if you're interested in getting one. I love this thing. I think that is so freaking good and I can't wait for DJI to drop the Mini 5 Pro because I'm so eager to see what they can release that's going to be better than this. Why do I think you should have a drone though? Well, mainly because you can get a couple of different shots very quickly. Apart from getting, you know, the establishing shots and the environmental shots, you can also use this as a extra camera on a tripod. You can just bring it up, you can place it in front of you and then walk past it, turn the camera around, walk again. Those kind of shots are super simple with something like this. There's no setup, there's no tripod, there's no attaching the camera, setting manual focus, making sure that everything is correct. It's just like fly it to the place where you're gonna walk, fly it back to you. You don't have to walk and go get your camera. It comes flying to you like, oh. Having a drone is a lifesaver. There's just so many things that you can do with this that will help you long term. The next thing is going to be wireless microphones. These ones are the DJI Mic 2. The user interface and the ease of use is what makes these microphones end up in my camera bag instead of the Rode Wireless Pro. I do think that the Rode sounds better, but it's marginal when you compare it to what you get with the DJI Mic. I do think that this is a lot easier to just bring out Test the camera, start shooting, and that's it. You can just grab one of these and then just plug it onto yourself and then walk away, start talking, and then you can sync it when you get into post instead of trying to have everything recorded into the camera. 32-bit float, there's all of these, like you can salvage any sort of audio, basically almost, and you can do all the things that you need to do with the audio in the editing program, but it also sounds great just straight out of the box. So it's very easy to use as a beginner. The next thing I highly recommend you to have is some sort of action camera. This is the GoPro Hero 11, and I'll be using this whenever I fly my drone. It's a great camera, I like it. I could have used a DJI Osmo instead, or I can use a GoPro. Almost all of the action cameras are freaking amazing at this point in time when I'm recording this video, so you can't go wrong with either. The GoPro and the Osmo Action 4 are on a specific level, and I think I made a video on that as well. You can check it out right here. If you're getting a Sony camera, you'll most likely have a couple of these batteries lying around. I cannot recommend you having the tri-charge enough. This is a product that I personally designed and brought to life together with UPO. I wanted to have a charger that charged all three batteries at the same time, but also have a place to store all my SD cards without having to bring something extra. So now you have a charger, you have a battery case and an SD card case all in one. This has been a lifesaver so many times because you can also use the batteries here as a power bank for your phone or for your iPad. Maybe you want to charge up your DJI mics or your GoPro. You can do that. 
with these batteries. Last thing that we're gonna talk about is uh, this. This is the Peak Design Travel Tripod carbon fiber. When I purchased this, I thought it was freaking expensive and way too much money to spend on a tripod. But I haven't felt the need to change tripod ever since I bought it. I am so freaking satisfied with this tripod on a day-to-day -day basis, mainly because it's lightweight. It fits right on the side of my camera bag, but also because it's so quick and simple to put the camera on or off. One thing that I do not like, and this is probably the absolute worst thing about this tripod is when you want to shoot vertical, this like, that's what you end up with. It's like, come on, huh? I don't know if you can see the issue here, but that, 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 that right there, that's the issue. That is the biggest downside with the tripod, but also the only downside that I have with the tripod. This is not cheap stuff. This is very expensive stuff. I know that. I don't want you to think that you should go out and buy all this right now because there's no need for you to buy it right now. I have accumulated this gear over the span of several years. This is not something that I just went out and bought and then all of a sudden I have all of this. I started investing into the Sony system back in 2018. And ever since I've tried to sort of like upgrade, buy something new, invest into my equipment, make sure that I have a streamlined setup that is working for my workflow. This is what I think you should invest in to start out your YouTuber career or your filmmaker career, because this is, this is some good stuff. I would love to know, what are your thoughts about this setup and what kind of setup are you shooting with right now? Drop a comment down below. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to see you in the next video. Peter, <laughs> I'm saying goodbye. Hold on, hi.